Well, AEW are coming out out of their fallout from Revolution, but also William Rue did promise us some announcements on this episode of NXT. So we're going to review, discuss, and talk about what really happened on both shows on this episode of the Leader Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, matches, wrestlers, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. Now, some of you probably saying, why am I still continuing the Wednesday Night War segment? Well, the thing is, we all know what's going to happen after WrestleMania. That NXT is going to be moving on Tuesdays, but... I want to use whatever time we got with them in the same Wednesday night, night war thing. But I know some of you who watch this are saying AEW won the Wednesday night war. And a matter of fact, you are right about that. But it doesn't mean do I need to stop from there. Because sometimes there are those like myself and others who review AEW and NXT. They say which show felt better for them to watch. But... But that doesn't mean I have to stop from there. But however, let's get started. Uh, let's review the views and uh, the ratings from both shows. AEW got for viewership 749,000 views. Compare from last week, 934,000 views with the rate in the 18 to 49 demographic. Uh, a 0.32 and compare from last week, which is... A point three three. Now you probably ask why did it drop that so much? Well, we could explain that because of what happened at Revolution of that botch ending, that could have played a factor to it. I not sure if people have talked about that, but it could be that, you know, we're not sure. Or there's those who are going back and forth watching uh AEW Dynamite and NXC. I don't know. Whatever the scenario is, but it is what it is. But however, WWE NXT has for viewership 691,000 views compared from last week, which was a 692,000 views. So they just dropped um, 1,000 views from that. As for their 18 to 49 demographic rating, they got a 0.18 compared from last week, which was a 0.20. Now, as you can see, this is why I review these, because sometimes we need to understand. Yes, I know that right now it should be pointless of me reviewing this, but like I said, we only got so much time we got with both of these shows and don't want to waste them. So that's the way I feel. Now, if you guys have a problem with it, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to debate. I'm not going to argue, but whatever we got left with, um, NXT doing their shows on Wednesdays I'm sure we will be fine by that time because evidence did reveal NXT can succeed if they're not head to head with AEW it's already been proven on four occasions but for now let's just uh, keep moving forward and review what happened in the fallout at AEW Dynamite All right, so the opening match on AEW Dynamite started out in singles competition with tag team specials. We're talking about Ray Phoenix along with Pac versus one half of the AEW tag team champions, uh, Matt Jackson, alongside his brother Nick. Now, there is a dynamic factor that was being played here. Even the commentators mentioned. Now, we have seen Matt and Nick as mostly as a tag team, but we rarely see Nick and Matt as singles competitors on a lot of occasions. But Phoenix, on the other hand, if you guys have been a fan of, of Phoenix for Ray Phoenix for a long time, like myself, 
he's not only good as a tag team specialist, but he's good as a singles competitor. And that's always been one of those factors that been played out. And that's what makes it great. It was a good match. But however, um, like I said, the factor between Rain Phoenix and Matt is what plays out. But it did prove that we may see some point down the line who would, uh, for um, the uh, Death Triangle, Pac and Ray Phoenix get a, a AEW World Tag Team title a tur a championship shot. We don't know when, but we do know that there is a possibility we could see sooner um, during the match. We did see SCU's Frankie Kazarian and Chris Dan Daniels looking on because they are now currently ranked number one in the rankings for the tag team division, but we'll see what happens. So, But the match ended great in, the, in favor of Ray Phoenix. But like I said, it did end it because he's good as a singles competitor as well. Now, like I said, this episode, this AEW Dynamite is the fallout of what happened in Revolution. We did see John Moxley and Kingston kind of like gave away what happened. Uh, you know, um, you know what we saw that he kind of like blacked out, even though it kind of went ridiculous. But that kind of made a very interesting storyline how... Um, Kingston said that he blacked out when he was in jail. They were telling him that he's going to Rikers or Sing Sing, that sort of thing. And he even saying, that, Kenny, you play video games. You think this is a joke? And that, you know, and Moxley goes out, tells him that he, he was planning to blow him up. But he did admit that Kenny was a better man. But however, he did state, like, where did you get these bombs, huh? And Kingston said he probably got it from Impact. I thought it was a really funny segment, but he also said, did you get in the mailbox the words that says Acme? Because, you know, he tried to put Looney Tunes into the whole thing. But he did state it that, you know, if you're going to do blow something up, you better use it well. And it didn't happen that way. I liked how they kind of like fall it out on this one because I know that people talked about the, the ending of Revolution. I mean, I thought it was really dumb, but the match was great. But the ending... No, nah, not so much. Now, the next match, we have Cody Rhodes versus, along with Arn Anister versus Seth Gargis, who made two appearances already in AEW Dark. Um, I, you guys can guess Cody actually won the match. But however, when Cody was about to do a post-match interview with Tony Schiavone, he got interrupted by the one man that nearly took him out, and that person was Penta, Cero, Penta El Cero M. Basically, he was saying that, Cody, if you are the prince of pro wrestling, I am the lord of Lucha Libre. And he also, but <coughs> what makes this great, Cody, well, Penta took it far. He told him that if I would have breaking you, you won't be able to hold this baby girl who is Brandy's pregnant with a little girl. And he took it too far. Cody went after him. They even tried to separate them. So we may see a storyline with the feud between both Penta and Cody. Um, I have to say this is going to be an interesting storyline in AW where they're going to go with, you know. Now, then we have a little interesting message that came from Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy to Miro and Kip Saban. Now, they're asking for one more match, but here's the, the stipulation. He said if they lose, Chuck goes back being uh, a butler. But however, the type of match they want to put, this was an idea from Orange Cassidy. To have the ring surrounded with arcade games, it's something that they like to do. If you guys recall, when this little feud happened, uh, they kind of smash, you know, one of their, <coughs> their ar the arcade game that Miro gave to Kip and, S and Penelope as a gift. So we're yet to hear the response from Miro and Kip. Um, we don't know when this match will take place, but this is going to be interesting. Now, we do get an interview with Sting, and once again, Tony Schiavone, who is the one person that can get interviews with Sting. Uh, Sting gave his, what happened after his fallout from uh, when he said that the Darby takes it uh, in new heights, heights that probably he would have done. But the one thing that he knew for sure, and the fact that they won, that 
Darby gets a win, Sting gets a win. But all of a sudden, here comes Lance Archer and Jake the Snake Roberts. And basically, Roberts goes, even though that they, he didn't win, he still considered himself the face. But they gave a warning to everyone, and that includes to Sting. So basically, Sting is the one guy that has no off-limits type of thing. <clears throat> but I'm not sure if we're going to see a feud with Sting and Lance Archer. That's something that I'm not sure if they're going to go with, but we'll see what happens. Now, we do get another interview with, this time, Dasha Gonzalez conducting the interview with QT Marshall. Now, we want to know what was what happened at the, cas at the casino tag team, Raya. We saw QT. He eliminated not only a, an, an opponent, but two of his teammates from the Nightmare family off, and he eliminated himself in spitting at Dustin Rhodes' um, face. And we don't know what's going on. He would refuse to talk about that. But his main focus was Lee Johnson. And his opponent that he had to face was the new addition of AEW. We're talking about all ego Ethan Page. Now, this match is something that it would fe feel for Ethan Page because he prefers to be in a singles competition. Not having one of those five-way matches that we saw in the ladder match. But... He was able to beat Lee Johnson, but however, after him winning the match, he began beating down Lee Johnson. But however, QT Marshall was just standing there doing nothing, just letting Lee Johnson get the beat down. And here comes the, uh, Dustin, tried to help, but QT just walked off. He just headed to the parking lot. He didn't go back say He just walked off. I don't know what is really going on. I don't know how what kind of story they're being put out in this, but this is going to be a little interesting thing to see. Could this be the fallout for QT that he's no longer part of the Nightmare family? I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Now, we all know who won in that big money match. We know Hangman won, and we don't know how much money he spent. But the, one of the first things that he that he demonstrated that he bought is a lawnmower, a very nice one. He did say he got himself some cases of whiskeys, bottles of of whatever, and then here comes the Dark Order saying that can we get a ride? All of that is just and they they told five no, you know weight restriction. But there was a moment that kind of botched. I don't know if you guys noticed that when they were taking off to get ice cream, uh, you can see that. Colt kind of jumped off because they the I think because of the they kind of like went like a willy type move. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed that, but it was I don't know what really is the weight restriction on that, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Now we get a do get we were supposed now Tony Schiavone was set to do another interview, but this time with the biggest signee or should I say the surprise signee that we did not expect in Revolution, Christian Cage, but however. It was interrupted by none other than our AEW world champion himself, Kenny, the Invisible Hand, Don Callis, and of course, the Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers. Now, they weren't there just to interrupt to ensure the, uh, Christian Cage because, you know, they're saying oh, he, that he will not be taking this time. But however, they wanted to explain what happened. They kind of, I think this kind of promo, what they were doing, it was kind of like perfect, like to fit into what happened after the fallout in, after what happened in the end of the explosion in the ring. Apparently, they decided not to give the fans what they want because many fans were expecting a very big explosion. There was a video I saw where. Two wrestlers and a ref were in the middle of the ring, and kaboom, it exploded. I think we were expecting that, but but the way they kind of put it out, saying that, oh, that you were the unsung hero. Eddie, you did a good job trying to save your friend, but you're not the hero on this one. So kind of like they played a game saying, you know, all of this and that. But I have to say, I like how they were trying to, um, how to put this, try to uh, fill it out saying, okay, you know, it wasn't a botch, but... Even though it probably was. I'm not sure. 
But here comes Kingston, you know, trying to deal with they, their little jokes. And they even, even warning him that it won't be pretty. But, of course, Eddie Kingston sucker punched. Kingston and the Good Brothers attacked him. But, however, here comes Moxley, the even the odds. But, however, near the... But as soon as that happened, here comes the man we were expecting to have an inter interview with, Christian Cage. Now, Kenny tried to shake his hand, but however, it kind of went where Christian has no intentions to shake his hands. But Kenny tried to cheap shot him, but Cage got him and he was about to put him out. But however, he was saved by Don Callis. But we kind of suspected what he is aiming for. We're talking about the AEW World Championship. Basically, it looks like he wants that title. Now, it would make a lot of sense. But the real question is, when will that happen? My money, I would say, probably double or nothing. But I think we're trying to see what happens. But keep in mind, Kenny does have the... Um, that match that's going to happen in Rebellion where whoever wins this Saturday's match between the Impact World Title and the TNA World Title uh, will face him at Rebellion and Impact. So I think we're trying to wait and see how that's going to turn out. You know, that's possibly my my prediction or something. I'm not sure. But we'll see where we go from there. Now we get the six-woman tag team match that was kind of speculated it, it it was going to happen in, after that match in, um, in the, for the AEW Women's Championship. We have first seen Britt Baker, Nala Rose, and of course Maki Ito. But however, if you guys ever seen Maki Ito, she sings during um, in her entrance. But all of a sudden, here comes Thunder Rosa, Neo Nizumnami, and Hikaru Shida attacking the other women. But however, Maki Ito continues to sing, not realizing what's going on. I thought it was classic. But the match itself was pretty good. I mean, you did see a great um, chemistry with Thunder Rosa and Nizunami and Shida. But of course, leave it to Thunder Rosa to win the match. But of course, we did know there was no way Rebel was injured. She was faking it because you know they don't. Uh, Britt doesn't want her in it, or she doesn't, or it's Rebel who doesn't want to be in it. So we'll see what happens. But however, once again. Britt Baker decided to attack her to prove another point, saying she doesn't belong in AEW. But, frankly, we're going to have an unsanctioned Lights Out match next week. It's going to be the main event. I cannot wait to see that. So, now we get to a little interesting um, segment that took place in the back. Now, Matt Hardy is still dealing with the fallout, what happened at the at the match against Hangman Page. Even Private Party are trying to cheer him up. But however, Matt said he had new acquisitions that he hired. And these were people I did not expect. But it's kind of interesting. He actually acquired the Butcher, the Blade, and the Bunny. So their primary goal right now is not just only to destroy Hangman Page. But to destroy Dark Order. So we're going to have a very interesting faction match. I can't wait to see that too. Now we get to another championship match. We got for the TNT championship. The challenger who won the face of the revolution ladder match. Scorpio Sky versus Darby Allen. Now, I don't know exactly how to play it out. Where... Or we're going to see Darby Allen drop the title and Scorpio Kai becomes a new champion. Or Darby still retains. I'm not sure. But for me, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to see what's going to happen. But it was a pretty good match. Like You can tell that Sc Scorpio, he is destined to become a champion. I mean, don't forget, he was the first ever AEW World Tag Team Champion alongside Kazarian. But like I said, I just let it play out. But I was amazed how the match ended with Darby Allen winning. Scorpio Sky was couldn't believe it. But however, as soon as the match was over, Sky snapped and he tried to break um, Darby's leg. I don't know. Are we going to see <coughs> Sky as a heel? 
Not sure. But we'll see what happens. Now we get to what, what was told this was going to happen at, at, since Revolution. The Inner Circle <coughs> War Council. We have all members. Jericho, MJF, um, Hager, Santana Ortiz. Now, Jericho was saying that we should get a new member, but uh, MJF wanted to kick someone out. But all of a sudden, we get the surprise return of Sammy Guevara. Now, Sammy wants to show Jericho something he didn't that he needs to know. He showed a video of what happened earlier in the day where MJF was planning to overthrow Jericho out of the inner circle. But however, it didn't go exactly to MJF's plan because apparently in secret, the inner circle were talking to each other, amongst each other. But of course they fired MJF, but MJF had a surprise of his own. He said he was too busy forming his own faction and the lights turned off. I was surprised and shocked to see it was Warlow, Sean Spears, and FTR along with Tully Blanchard. I mean, this match kind of showed, okay, MJF, I feel like he's that one guy who's going to be the heel faction that's going to take over AEW. I mean, the Inner Circle were doing that until when they first appeared. And now, <coughs> now that the Inner Circle have fallen out of favor... Here comes another faction. Well, no name yet, but I like it how they whacked Hager with the bottle, handcuffed Santana Ortiz. Sammy's head got went through a chair. But Jericho got beat with a baseball bat and powerbombed through a table. I mean, this is kind of like something we would expect, but I feel I think this could be an interesting faction to see. But we'll see what happens next week on the, on the next AEW Dynamite. So let's move on with NXT. Alrighty, so NXT. It started out with the big announcements that William Regal had promised everyone last week. Something like landscaping that's gonna happen. Now the first announcement it's no secret that um, WrestleMania is almost here. Um, norm, uh, norm, now we are seeing that we're going to have a two-day, a two-night event of WrestleMania. However, they did announce a two-day takeover event called Stand and Deliver. I mean, this is huge for NXT. I mean, I don't know how uh, what matches will be put out in Wrestlemania in a stand in the next takeover I mean we do know they do a takeover before Wrestlemania but this is huge but I'm really happy about it it's also going to take place in April in case you guys are wondering but I'm happy about it now the second big news he brought out all the women's in the in all in the next T including the ref and of course um he called out Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai, who we know are the first ever NXT um, Women's Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic winners. As you know, what happened the previous week with the fallout of what happened. We know that they were screwed by Adam Pearce. They could have won the WWE Women's Tag Team titles, but it didn't happen that way. Basically, Regal even confronted Pearce about that. So... He said that he tried to make calls to go through the, 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 the do something right. But however, he decided, you know what? We're going to do it ourselves. So for the first time ever, he introduced a new title. This is something that was predicted or mentioned by uh, Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer. The first ever NXT Women's Tag Team titles. And Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai are the first champions. Now, you probably say, why did they give them that? To be fair, they were the first ever women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. So, I feel it could be fair. Now, when they rewarded th these titles to them, apparently, their first challengers is the ones who were runner-up to beat them at the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. 
Ember Moon, and Shotzi Blackheart. Now, I thought of the idea was good. Even Regal, he was okay with the idea too. So, they booked the match for that, which was all, totally awesome. So we'll so I will get to that in a bit. Now the first opening match it was for the NXT Women's Championship between Io Shirai and Tony Storm. Now keep in mind Tony Storm have bragged about how Io Shirai was unable to beat her. If you guys didn't know about her, their involvement at the <coughs> at the second May Young Classics, Tony Storm won that match. Io Shirai was the runner up. But the real question that I think they did put out is, can Io Shirai beat Tony Storm? But the match was good. Not I feel like they could have made this also a takeover match, but it didn't. But it was good. And I wasn't sure if Tony Storm will be the one to the throne up. But however, it was Io Shirai that put her in a submission and made her tap and retained the NXT women's title. I'm happy with it. I hope everybody is too. Now, we jump in with an interview with LA Knight. As you know, LA Knight, we know that we've been asking, when is he going to wrestle? When he's going to do it? It's, he said on his time, but he did state it. It's going to be next week. But however, someone decided to get a little payback after what happened last week. Bronson Reed. Now, we may get a feud between those two. Don't know when. Because it was revealed that LA Knight will be in action next week, but they never say who it is. I'm going to say it's someone from the Performance Center. I'm not entirely sure yet. But we'll see when we get there. Now, the next match, we have Jake Atlas versus Pete Dunne. This is a brutal match. Now, you know how Pete, Pete Dunne is. He tried to break... Uh, Jake Atlas' fingers and his arms, you know, that that's kind of like the brutalizer of him. And, of course, he won by that with that in the match, he even submitted him. But, however, in post-match, he did state that there, if there's anyone that is willing to take him out, he's he said that they're welcome to try. That is interesting. So, basically, he put himself as a target. Now... Imperium, we have been seeing recently they have showed up. We're talking about Eichner, Bartel, and of course, Alexander Wolf. They've been recently been showing up, now without their leader, the in-ring general, Walter. So that so they sent a message to Thatcher saying, you see, there's a bit of history between Bartel and Walter together with, uh, with Thatcher. So they're saying that everything they want to do is for him. And they said, bring Champa with you too. For your so, so basically, they're throwing out an invitation. It appears that Imperium wants to expand all the way to the NXT. But we'll get to that. Uh, well, uh, let's do that right now. So when Thatcher got it, he's about to talk, but Champa decided to speak on behalf of, of Thatcher, saying like we don't that we're not interested. But he did say that they should. Be in the match against the members of Imperium, but I don't know how Thatcher would feel about that. I think <coughs> there's a part of him feel like he wants to join, but we'll see what happens. Now we've been seeing recently Swerve has been attacking Leon Ruff. He's had it with him, getting all the opportunities. Swerve has been asking for his. So Leon Ruff decided that he's going to put himself in the match against him. Now, we don't know when will that be or or it, like if if Swerve heard it. But we'll see what, what happens. Now we get to the first ever match for the NXT Women's Tag Team Titles between the, current, the newly crowned champions, Gonzalez and Kai, <coughs> taking on Moon and Blackheart. It was a pretty good match. Now, I know we're going to see more of these women's tag team matches. But I'll explain that in more in the in my final thoughts. But it was a good match. Uh, it was a straight up good, no interference, that sort of thing. But, however, 
the biggest upset is that Moon and Blackheart won the match, making themselves the newly crowned NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. It was a pretty good way. Now, jump into the back where Dakota and you know, Moon and Blackheart were congratulating with the women in the background. Later on, you see in the other side, Indy and Candice are bitter, like believing that should have been theirs. I mean, look, you girls didn't win the didn't run her up for the, the titles, or you didn't have the guts to go up and tell Kai and Raquel you want those titles. But as soon as they were leaving, they bump into Johnny, but of course, f um, here comes Theory Furious about Johnny paying the, the, the therapist, but of course, he said he also was angry with, with Dexter Loomis, so he set himself in the match against Loomis. So that is something... Very interesting to see. Now, the next match we have Caden Carter versus Xylee. This is a revenge match after what happened a couple weeks ago with Casey Catanzaro, where Lee kind of broke her, her leg. Now, it seems like everything was going great, but Casey showed up giving support to Caden. But once again, Xylee wanted to break Caden's leg in a similar fashion, but this time it did not go in that way. Casey. Beat her with the clutches. And then Boa got involved. Destroyed one of them. But uh, Kaden got the other one. And whack him. Now I don't know what Tian Shai is actually going to think about this. But. We're going to see that probably this could be a beginning of. A feud between those guys. Now. This next segment kind of. Surprised me. But it was sort of. How do I say this. Inevitable that was going to happen. Jordan Devlin comes out saying that he knows that WrestleMania is around the corner. And of course, I knew he was targeting Santos Escobar, and he did state it. He's going to be the proof once and for all who is the real NXT Cruiserweight champion. So you see, he puts the camera to an airplane, he's on his way over here. Now, you see it later on after they show a little segment from Zoe Clark, even though I don't talk about that much. But here, anyway, Santos is not too happy. He's saying that he's the real world, uh, the real cruiserweight champion, that he defended that title time and time again. Now, Will Regal is not a fan of Santos in any way. But as soon as he was confronting Regal about Devlin making his appearance, Telling him that he's the real cruiserweight champion. Well, I don't think Regal ha doesn't believe that because you got to remember, originally, because of what happened with the pandemic, Jordan Devlin was stuck in the UK. He couldn't leave, so they had to find an interim, and later was declared the NXT. No interim or anything. But of course, uh, Raúl Mendoza and Joaquin Wild had their match against Grizzle Young veterans. And once again, girls of young veterans decided, you know, they're going to be, you know, proven that they are the best tag team in all of WWE. But however, all of a sudden we see Breezango coming out in their astronaut outfits. Legado was like in shock. But once the helmets were removed, we're like MSK. Even grizzled young veterans were shocked. But because of this distraction... Grizzle Young Veterans lost the match, allowing for Legato to, to win. Grizzle Young Veterans confronted him, but however, um, Wesley got what he wanted. Hand for a hand. Basically, he, he swung his helmet and whacked, I think it's Gibbons, or, or I think Gibbons, yeah, Gibbons' hand. And he was like that. And of course, like, Gado were happy. But all of a sudden, Breezango getting retribution for what happened the last time when Way it kind of sealed the deal. So basically, both these teams got what they wanted. Now, during the interview with the first ever the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic and NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, Dakota Kai and Raquel... They're not happy. They're kind of like emotional. Kai's not happy, but however, 
Gonzalez was trying to say the upper side. They were the first. To, it's like that something could not be taken away. But however, they received a, an unexpected visitor. And I'm talking about Io Shirai. So Iro decided she wants to face Raquel. But Gonzalez said this. Be careful what you wish for. But you know, Io, she is not afraid of anything. Now let's get to the main event, which is for the NXT Championship match, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. Now keep in mind, <coughs> Finn Balor did make a, a compelling argument. Finn Balor's only thing that he ever cared about was the NXT Championship. And that he told Strong, don't you think that maybe the reason Cole acted this way is because the only thing he does not have is the title? That's always been the case. But the match was very great, really good. It should have been a takeover match. But however, I think they're building up for something. And I'll get to that in a bit. But during the match, you see Kyle O'Reilly shows up. Cole is distracted. But it did allow to Finn Balor to apply 1916 and the coup de gras onto Cole to ensure Finn Balor wins and retain the title. Here comes Kyle O'Reilly. And Cole begged for his life, but however, he removed the undisputed wrist uh, armband from Cole, saying that Undisputed Era is dead. And he went right straight to him, attacking him. Even refs were trying to pull. Nothing was going to keep them down. But however, as soon as they left, Finn Balor felt the presence and he said this. What took you so long? And that person is none other than Tetok. Karen Cross. So I, I'm not sure if this is going to be a takeover match. I mean, I would love to see Balor and Cross in the next takeover match. I mean, would you guys like to see that? But I do. So let's jump in right now before I end this episode to my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts about AEW and NXT? Which show was better? I have to say AEW. Not because of the ratings. I have to say they really, really bounced back. Now, what exactly am I referring to? I know that there were mixed feelings and reaction to what happened at the end of Revolution where... We did not see the big explosion that we pe that we were expecting. I mean, I was expecting a big explosion. I'm assuming you guys were too. But I did like how Eddie Kingston and John Moxley said, you know, like how, you know, oh, we were expecting a big explosion. What do you thought? You were being funny? And that's kind of the thing. And then you see Don Callis, Kenny Omega, and... And the Good Brothers coming out trying to say, we're not going to give you that big explosion. Not on our watch. You know, so it's kind of like they're saying, we're giving you guys your hopes and dreams. Well, ain't going to happen. I have to say, I did like where they were going with it. Because it, it kind of shows like, oh, you, you, th you we're not going to give you what you want. And that kind of fits into it. You know, because I feel like they bounce back. But I think what really bounced back even more, not only because they had some good matches with Cody and Penta getting into a fight, you know, as soon as he won his match, um, that decent six-woman tag team match, but I think the one thing that bounced back was the fact that we saw MJF introduce his new faction, where he was planning to overthrow Jericho, but Jericho saw that coming a mile away and decided, you know, I'm going to team up. But we did saw like the somewhat version of a four horsemen. I don't think they're gonna call it four horsemen. I mean, they could call it whatever they want. But 
that is something I think that kind of changed it. Now, don't get me wrong, NXT is a good show. I did like the idea of the of how the women's uh championship match was going. The NXT women's house, I say it was a good move, but however, I feel they could have saved that, like the match itself, at another later time, in my opinion. I mean, you could have said, okay, we're going to give Amber Moon and Shotzi Blackheart their tag team title shot. Or or otherwise have who else wants a title shot. You saw uh, the ending where the part where it, uh, Indy Hartwell and Candice are like bitter, wishing that they're saying that could have been us. But it didn't. I mean, we could have led on to that. Don't get me wrong. Having the NXT women's tag team title is a good idea. And I'll explain more on that, like a, when we have the a, a different uh, DWZ discussion. Because right now I'm working on the the one about the AW World Title and the and the Impact World Title. We'll get to that some other point. But like I said, they could have saved that up at another time. <coughs> but the match with Casey and. Um, with Caden Carter and Xylee, I feel that was too, not too exciting for me. I mean, I get the revenge part with KZ trying to, I mean, I get that they were going to go with it, but I feel that they, it was just too, too, not too exciting for me. I mean, the rest of the show was good, but I feel that AEW were able to somehow bounce back since the fallout of what happened at the end of Revolution, and I'm, I'm okay with it. I say they bounce well, you know, with Moxie and and Kingston explaining what they felt, what happened, and of course Omega and Don Callis and the Good Brothers saying, "Well, I'm not gonna give you that explosion." I mean, the shows were good, but I feel that AEW had the much better edge because they bounced back with it. I mean, that's something we generally see, like they put their foot down and try to recover from. The mixed reaction of the ending of Revolution. So that's how I see it. So I feel AW won this week. In my personal opinion. And I hope you guys feel the same way. But if not, I understand. You can leave a comment down below on that. So for now, I'll see you guys the next time on the next DWZ time. the next On this DWZ channel. So I must bid all of you guys adieu. So goodbye, Mwah. and have a nice day. Bang!